Chris Trot from Team TaylorMade. This is one of my favorite areas to talk about. We're talking high toe three and mill grind three. Which golfer goes for which wedge? Well, as you look at the mill grind three as a family, you're gonna notice the wedges move through the set. There's a nice blend there. Very classic look, especially when it comes to the leading edges of them and you put them down versus the two. They're slightly different, much straighter leading edge, smaller profile, and that's brilliant. And there's thick, thin technology in there that, like I say, through the set of wedges works fantastically. And if you're a guy or girl who likes a classic looking wedge, this is a great way to go. You have the mill grind sole, you have that beautiful chrome finish, that milky chrome finish, and of course you have the raw face with the raised micro ribs. But it's the same that can be said about the high toe three. It has that copper finish, which often people love when it comes to their wedges. When you place it down, You'll notice straight away though, there's much more mass here towards the toe. Now, myself, I like that because in this scenario I've got here, we're in the rough, it's a linksy type shot, and that golf ball is sitting up a little bit. By having more mass out there up towards the toe section and the full face score lines, which quite often as you get playful with your short game and you swing across and to the left with it, you might leverage them, you may even want a shot where it comes out and you actually hit with the part of the toe to give it a different spin, not quite as much spin because you don't want that ball to grab. So examples of golf shots certainly are when the ball is sitting up and you're not quite sure where you're going to hit that club because the mass of the club is higher, so the weight is higher in the high toe three, therefore it will come out slightly different. Let me see if I can demonstrate one for you just on this shot with the 56. I'm going to play it nice and soft. Try and let that club do the work for me. Just let the weight of the head fall onto the golf ball. So that's a pretty good start, pretty good example. I'd be okay with that. It's ran through. Now, good example here. Hit slightly higher in the blade. That's why it came out. We couldn't predict what Lai was going to do. Came out with a high launch, not much spin on it. It's what you like. It's a preference you like. If you have a beginner golfer or someone who's experimenting with this, then the high toe three is great. I personally love the high toe three, especially when I don't know where the bottom is. But on the same note, it doesn't mean that if you're someone who wants the slightly more aggressive leading edge to cut through here, you can't simply play the same golf shot, flip one up, let it run out. You know, I had control. That one was maybe a little better delivery, caught a little bit lower in the blade, but great result nonetheless. It just, it's options. It's about personal feel. I like both the wedges, but as I look at them, you obviously have a slightly darker look that is then going to be a little bit larger, gives me maybe more options in that high toe, and then a more classic look for those golfers out there that want that when it comes to the mill grind three. It's a choice you're gonna have to make as you go through a fitting process, but do think about all the shots that you're gonna have on a golf course. Let's move into the trap, but this isn't any ordinary trap. This is a heavy, Lynx sand, okay? Also, look, I'm not the tallest individual, but it's a steep face, you've got to get over it. So, when I take my high toe three, and this is where you really get into the wedges Swiss armified, the versatility here. This 156 has got 10 degrees of bounce. I'm gonna lay it wide open. Now I'm revealing all of that high toe. Whenever you play a shot like this, and I don't wanna get into teaching you here, but weight goes on the left side, and you're gonna hit down, and you're gonna pull left on this for the right-handed golfer. That's how you're gonna get it to pop. And you'll notice that when I hit it, it's gonna have to pop based on the lip that's in front of me. But we're gonna rip up the face from left to right, and this is where really you could get into using those full face score lines, but the wedge looks so big behind the ball. That's what I like about this. It's screaming confidence to me. And when obviously that sole, that mill grind sole goes into this sand, you're gonna hear the thud. So keep your ears open. This is a 56, hit just behind it. Hear the sound? That's a great sound. It's the sound of a good wedge. And you can see on here, that was struck all the way up here. That's a high hit in the face. As it came out, it ran on a bit, not too bad. Versatility, remember I talked about that, that's two different shots. 
where you can get the benefit. You can see how the sand is really caught. That's a slightly wider sole on there as well. So it's really caught, dug in, done the job. It's not a bad result to be fair. Now, again, not to say that it can't be done when it comes to the Mill Grime 3. I always look at this one because it's a beautiful looking club, that thick, thin sole. That's gonna take care of business up there for launch and spin. Open it, reveal the sole. Bit of confidence because I've still got the mark from the previous shot I hit, you gotta love that. Now this bunker lip, let's be honest, the trap's coming down a little bit like this, so it's not too difficult for anyone out there who's panicking. But blade goes open, weight goes left side, it is a 56, you haven't got to smack it. You might not get the same sound you got as the other one because the flange is a little bit smaller, but still in there, weight left side, Caught that, not great. Little run out, done the job. Hit higher in the blade, divot maybe a bit deeper. I feel that would have been a bit more forgiving for me there. Almost, I've got to be a bit more precise on this. But you do have the feel, it's a raw face. It's a tough shot at the end of the day. I've got two putts, what, from seven feet, both of them. If I'm making par on here, realistically, if I hit it in here, that's a good result, you'd move on. Both clubs do the job. The larger face is the one I like. I think you know where I'm going. A high toe three fan massively, but it doesn't mean that this club can't do the job. Let's try it out on a tight lie, see what we get with that. Our third shot, tight lie. It's a great place to come and test a wedge, no matter which model you are looking for. But we are slightly uphill. They're all important things because it's how you're going to interact with the mill grind sole on both of these wedges. Let's start with the MG3. And as we look at this and you put it behind the golf ball, this is where those of you that like the classic look, you're really gonna go for this one. Get nice and in there, nice and tight. And you're looking for strike, maybe gonna be tough because the ball's a little bit below the feet. But again, that wedge just looks like it wants to just nip it off that turf. Good job, the bounce came out. Ran out there, not too bad. Maybe a little deep. Strike was in the middle. So again, you're getting feedback. You notice how easily I'm getting feedback from these wedges. That's all to do with the feel, how versatile they are. Now with the high toe three, and you put it down on this one, slightly different leading edge, a little bit more rounded. So some of you might not like that. That may be for some people's preference. I can't make that decision for you. You have to come out and hit the shots. Obviously, it's a little bit larger. We've had that conversation, but straight away as I get the feel, I like the way I can feel the mill grind sole underneath. I know how versatile this wedge really is. Just look at that. That was nip pure. A little bit more confidence on that one. The larger head is something I really like. Held up nicely onto the green, strike low in the blade, firm wrists. For me, this is, I love this wedge. I have to be honest. I'm really drawn into how versatile it is. I love how the feel of it is off the blade. And I do like that classic coppery look. But again, not to diminish on the options. That is me. You need to do this test. Go through the process with your fitter and decide what you want to do. Take your time on this. It's an important area of the game and you must experiment with it. Full face score lines, use them. Feel shots out the toe, feel the bounces, talk it out to yourself and talk it out with your fitter. This is a great area to do this. Late one night on a golf course, somewhere you've got to spend time. If these are products you are interested in, go to tailormadegolf.com and check it out. And I advise you to get a fitting and do what we've done here for your game.